A high speed conversation, but low speed roads. That's what's going on in this day and age because Transport Secretary Louise Hay has said she wants to roll out even more 20 mile per hour speed zones because they've been working super well in Wales, haven't they? People love it. Um, and she says that she wanted to end the culture wars over transport policy. Um, and hopes that unprecedented levels of financial backing for active travel would be announced in the budget. Well, you're going to be getting some financial backing for me, no doubt, because I happen to have a tangle in a 20 mile per hour zone. And this is, I'm going to fully confess, as someone who was um, uh, clocked a, a few points on a licence uh, in the not too recent past, um, I drive around like an absolute, you know, vigilant now. I just lit my eyes on that speedometer all the time. Sometimes I could be running over push chairs and fox. I wouldn't know because I'm just making sure I don't break that blimmin' speed limit. I, you will never find anybody who tries harder not to speed than me. As soon as I get on a road, boom, the, the limiter is on. That little thing, I'm like doo -doo 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 -doo, pressing my button so, it, so I cannot go any faster. I am so vigilant that I thought it would be impossible for me to ever be papped ever again. But no. A letter came through my letterbox, didn't it, the other day? Because I was found doing 25 in a 20. Uh, I just, I, I'm like, how has this happened? And I just feel like now, because I drive a lot out of London, in and out of London, at least two, three times a week, that you're just a magnet for these things. Even if you want to avoid them, you can't. And it just seems so punitive. Um, so I'm going to uh, invite onto the show now one of my favourite human beings on the planet, can I just say, especially right now, Mr Loophole himself, Nick Freeman. Um, Nick, I, I don't know what you think about the 20 mile per hour zones. I despise them for obvious reasons. But I do think that on some level, I, I find them almost dangerous because it's quite hard to regulate your speed when it's that sort of, you know, the margins are that small and the speed's that low. And especially when you're sort of driving around in a built up area and making sure that, I don't know, uh, Uber drivers aren't crashing into you and, uh, you know, delivery drivers aren't driving over your bonnet and kids aren't running out into the road. And I creep along in congestion most of the time where even reaching 15 miles per hour feels like a bonus. And yet some, somehow, bah, I'm caught and they're going to roll out more of these things. What they've done is they've given the local councils who are really cash strapped at the moment free reign to do what they want with 20 mile an hour speed limits. And as you say, I mean, obviously that they, they need the money. So we know now that there's going to be a blanket unrolling of 20 mile an hour speed limits across the country. Um, so basically, the, 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 the Tory government very recently changed its tax. It was desperate for votes. It was too late. And this government have taken the baton over on the war on motorists. And it, it's appalling because it, it it's. It's counterintuitive. Um, you're spending more time in your car. You, you literally feel, I might as well get out and walk. And that, of course, is what they want you to do. But that doesn't really work for busy working lives. Um, people are inclined to fiddle with their phones. They're going so slowly. They're obsessed, as you've rightly indicated, not with what's going, not with spatial awareness, but how fast am I going? And you inevitably sit at 16, 17 and think, I'm safe. It's carbon neutral. The statistics actually show that, obviously, if you hit someone at 30, you're going to co cause more injury. But statistically, st statistically, there are no, they're no safer than the 20 mile an hour. There are no more accidents or less accidents. So it really is just a way of getting money from the motorist. Uh, it serves absolutely no useful purpose. And it costs the economy billions and billions of pounds. So it just makes no sense. And as far as the mental health of the driver, you know, the driver, it's just part of the war on motorists. You know, for me, I can understand if someone says, look, we're concerned about safety about schools, fine. Introduce it on a dynamic basis so that when schools are going to school and when they're coming home, you have it for a, for a temporary period at that time. But just simply to say, well, it's two in the morning um, and there's nothing on the road and I've got to sit at 20 miles an hour. It, it defies common sense, it defies logic, it defies reason. And, and you know, the, the motorists, by and large, they're responsible. They try and abide by it. And, it, you know, I, I drive to London regularly and I know when I come off the M1 and I get onto that Finchley Road, I'm constantly hitting my brakes because the car won't want to sit normally at 20 miles an hour on a slight decline. Um, so cars, the modern gearing of cars, is not designed for it. And then you have this perverse situation where cyclists who have no speed limit are undertaking and they're overtaking and they're all over the place. And you're looking at a speedometer 
and you don't want to get an, commit an offence, and God help you if you have to catch a cyclist. So it, it, we just need a bit of common sense. We want to make our roads safer. This isn't the right move. Um, what, what the government are doing is vicariously saying to councils, look, here, we're going to give you a hand. And they have also said that they're going to be behind the finance as well. So there is going to be some uh, investment from central <coughs> government to support councils and encourage them to, to introduce this scheme everywhere. Um, as I say, war on motorists, this, this is where we are at the moment. It yeah. makes no sense and the economy is paying dearly for it. Right. And, and what I find hateful about this is, you know, like I say, I'm really trying hard, really trying hard to make sure I'm a very good and sensible driver not that i was a mental one before um and so i have my sat nav on all the time and mm. i'm looking at that you know where am i going what's the speed limit because when i go up above a yeah. certain level where it has the speed limit yeah. in the corner it flashes red if i'm above it so i see yeah. that i use my limiter problem is my sat nav hasn't been updated every five seconds so yeah. tell me it's a 30 yeah. mile per hour road when it isn't and sometimes you come off a road and you turn round into another road and before you've even established what speed that is boom there's a camera yeah. and i think that you know so on one hand the paying of it the paying the money is you know just terrible you know it's dreadful we, they're being we, being used to cash cow but what actually ticks me off more is the fact that if i sort of you know accidentally just get this wrong fall into one of these booby traps because that's what it feels like it feels mm. like you know mm. uh, ieds dotted all around the blimmin city of london yeah. that i'm going to end up being told you're a criminal and your license is being taken off you while some people i drive well, down well, the road and some people are smoking weed out the window well, you, you, and there's no one to stop them. There's no one to police that. Yeah. Um, the drug drug driving is absolutely it, it's rife. And where are the where are the uniformed police officers dealing with it? They don't exist. But you you go 25 in a 20, and you will be criminalised. And you know, somebody like myself, I drive 50,000 miles a year, um, and you're obsessed, as you say, you have to be obsessed with your speedometer at all times. That doesn't make for good safe driving. We want to be looking around all the time. It's a natural thing. This is unnatural. As I said, it's counterintuitive. We don't feel comfortable driving at that speed. It's not what cars are about. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's just that we're a cash cow. That's the way it is at the moment. The government will uh, make what they can until this government are kicked out and a more sensible government are put in place. <laughs> and, and they will actually act. Uh, yes, I know we're going to have to wait a few years for that now, <laughs> yeah. aren't we? Um, oh, well, I've lost you know, my this, this by then. I'll be on a magic Well, this carpet. government did say... <laughs> Didn't this government say they were going to get the country going? Yeah. Yes. You know, and they're not. They're not. They're, no, they're stagnating the, the roads. They're yeah. stagnating yeah. the roads. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. It's brilliant having you on, Nick. Thank you so much for talking. It's so much common sense. I'm pretty sure I'm probably going to have to pick up the phones with him and ask him for a bit of help.